In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how I personally deal with all of the paper that comes along with homeschooling. Let's chat about it. Before we go any further, I wanna say welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Kayla. This is Ode to Abode, a place where I love to talk about home education. I love to share our homeschool journey with you guys and lots of resources and books and tips and tricks and reviews along the way. I also love to share a little bit of homemaking, decorating and organizing. So if you're into any of that, I hope that you will follow along. Click the subscribe button, turn on notifications, comment down below to introduce yourself so that we can connect. Today's video is a collaboration and it's being hosted by Anna over at Just Making It Work. Anna is a homeschool mom, but she has recently pivoted her channel to be for home management and simple solutions for things like organizing, decluttering, time management. She shares a lot of really helpful information, so make sure that you go and check out her channel, which will be linked in the description box. And also make sure you check out the collab playlist, which will also be linked in the description box below. There are a bunch of us mamas collabing in this playlist. Most of us are homeschool mamas who have homeschool content on our channels, but we are talking about decluttering in this playlist. I am gonna be sharing how I personally deal with paper clutter. If you are a homeschool family, then you probably know there is so much paper clutter that comes along with it. Really, in our society, we are inundated with paper clutter as it is, but there's a lot of solutions that are fairly simple for general life paper clutter. You can switch your bills to get emailed to you instead of sent in the mail. But what about homeschool paper clutter? You might have workbooks, worksheets, printables, flashcards, and that's not even mentioning all of the art. If your kids love to draw, color, doodle, and make crafts like mine do, that's even more paper that's stacking up every single day. I hate loose paper floating around the house. It stresses me out, it collects dust, and it just looks messy. So for me, everything in our home has to have a home. It has to have a place to go, and ideally, we are simplifying and having less rather than accumulating more. And those rules apply to paper just like they apply to clothes or shoes or dishes or anything else in my home. I am always looking for ways to cut down on what we have and also appropriately organize and house the things that we own. The first thing that we use in our home that has really helped my girls is they each have a binder for all of their finished artwork. So I have two of these, one for each of my kiddos. Anything that they draw, color, or make on paper that does not have to do necessarily with what we are learning in school goes into these binders once it is finished. This becomes their personal portfolio for art that they've created, for mementos that are really special and important to them and everything is very protected in plastic page protectors so that it's not getting damaged or hole punched. The nice thing about the binder system is once the binder is full, the binder itself enforces the limit. I don't need to tell my kids it's time to throw away their precious artwork. If the binder is too full to fit new art, then that means they have to let go of some of the older things that are in there. And honestly, the more that we practice this, the easier it becomes for them. They are getting more and more decisive about what they want to keep based on the quality of the art, whether they feel that it's their best work or not, based on what it means to them, if there's a memory associated with that piece, and sometimes even based on redundancy. So for example, if they have four drawings of a cupcake, then they will know, okay, I can let go of some of these drawings that are really similar because I want to add this new drawing of a lion or whatever. That's just an example. I highly recommend giving your kids a limited space 
where they can keep and preserve their artwork. The binder system works great for art that you don't want to display. And there's also some really great solutions for displaying your kids' artwork. I have used these art display systems that are basically like a metal cord that's anchored in two different places on the wall, and it comes with little clips that can hang on the cord. The girls can easily change out what artwork they have displayed on these and keep out what's special or fresh or seasonal. And again, there's only a limited amount of space. So they have to be selective about what they're displaying. It allows them to have a creative outlet in their bedroom. Another great way to give your kids the freedom to display their art is actually to frame it. My daughters have a couple of picture frames in their room that they know they can switch out the artwork Typically, they switch it out seasonally. I have also seen these really awesome picture frames that allow you to actually store a stack of drawings in the frame, and then you can easily switch out what picture is being displayed in the glass. I have not purchased these yet, but I have seen my friends use them in their homes, and they are definitely in my Amazon cart. Now, one problem we have run into with the binders is that these page protectors in the binders only fit a standard size piece of paper. So if your kids are like mine and they're using paper that comes in a larger size, like watercolor paper or a canvas paper, those things might not fit into those page protectors. So our solution for that is one of these. An accordion file like this is the perfect solution for larger papers. I think because these are made for like business documents or even legal documents, they do have a little bit more space. You can kind of see the size difference here. The accordion file is significantly longer than the page protector system in the binder. So this is the perfect solution for us to save some of those larger pieces of art. Okay, so maybe this is just my daughter, but if you have a kid who is an artist who's constantly creating art, sometimes they will start a drawing, painting, craft, and they won't finish it right away, but they don't want to let it go because they want to continue working on it. So what do you do with that stuff? What I am currently using that's working really well is one of these magazine files. This one is from Ikea. They have these just about everywhere. If you get the cardboard ones, they are ridiculously cheap. But of course, they also have plastic ones that are pretty inexpensive, all the way up to like metal or wooden ones that are a little bit pricier, but much more aesthetically pleasing. So in this magazine file, my daughter has unfinished art. So things that she has drawn, but maybe she hasn't fully colored yet. Paint by sticker pages that she is still working on. Instructions to crafts that she's still working on. So this is like an embroidery hoop craft that she hasn't quite finished yet. It doesn't have to look perfect because you won't see it. And then again, this is like a limited space, right? It can only hold so much. So that gives another natural limit to how many crafts and drawings we can have that are sort of in progress and not finished. If this is full, then that means we either need to toss out some of these things that we have given up on or lost interest in, or we need to put the brakes on and not start any new projects because there's no space for them. Okay, so those systems are great for all of the drawings, doodles, but what about all of your kids' schoolwork? Now, obviously, if you live in a state that requires you to turn in some sort of record, some sort of collection of your children's work for the year, like a portfolio, then you want to make sure that whatever your system is for keeping schoolwork, it will align with those legalities and those standards that you have to meet. Here in Texas, I am not required to turn in anything or keep a portfolio, but I do want to keep some examples of our best work for sentimental value, but also kind of that just in case. I highly recommend that you try notebooking. It's so easy to keep track of your work when it's in a pretty bound book as opposed to loose everywhere. You've seen me mention these before. These are the notebooks from School Nest, and we absolutely love these notebooks. 
So I have the second grade notebook and I have the kindergarten notebook for my youngest daughter. The notebooks have a dotted grid page on one side and a lined composition page on the other side that leaves a space for an illustration above the composition. For the younger grades, Megan over at School Nest does provide the sort of standard primary level training lines for handwriting. And then for the higher grades, that's gonna look more just like regular notebook lines that are closely spaced. And I believe she also provides a lot more writing space rather than having the illustration space on top. We're able to use these notebooks for almost every subject. So if we have copy work for any of our subjects, it goes in the notebook. If we are just doing composition or coming up with sentences on our own for any subject, it goes in the notebook. My daughter does her spelling tests in the notebook. If we're learning new vocabulary, we will put that in the notebook. I'm also not afraid to add in worksheets or coloring pages or little flaps. I can tape or glue whatever we actually want to keep right into our notebooks. And it just becomes a great memory book and also a portfolio that fits on our cart. It's easy to grab, it's easy to take with us. Now, before I got these larger notebooks from Megan over at School Nest, I originally thought that we were going to do all of our school notebooking in these notebooks. These are our watercolor notebooks. And just so you know, I will link these and I will also link Megan's notebooks that we love in the description box down below. So make sure that you check that out if you're interested in either of these. We really love to watercolor as part of our homeschool. And I loved the size of these. They're nice and compact, which is easy for even my little one to handle. We started off um, last year, actually, using these as our main school notebooks. So my daughter would put a watercolor piece and then sometimes some notes or a sentence um, that was kind of like a summary of what we had learned in science. And then I think we also did some history and geography in here. We even like taped in some of our map work in here because this was before we got the other notebooks. Um, we taped in some coloring sheets that we got from History Quest. We're not taping stuff in these notebooks anymore because now that's what we're using the graded notebooks for. If we have paper that we want to tape in, we will put them in there. This is a drawing and narration. And then to save space, we actually added a different narration and drawing underneath. So sometimes we get creative and make like these little flap systems to be able to fit more things on just one page. We just use double-sided tape for all of this stuff. My preference is the double-sided tape rollers because they are so much easier to use than the double-sided tape that you like pull out. Here's a really beautiful watercolor that my daughter did with her writing on the other side. When we were learning about the life cycle of butterflies, we taped in a little printable that we colored, and then my daughter also did a doodle on the other side. Here's a watercolor that she did from our study of the Aztec civilization. And then we also have another taped in coloring sheet. My kindergartner has just recently started to use this watercolor notebook. This is her interpretation of an emperor's crown from the Aztec civilization. And then she has some abstract art in here from when we were studying pointillism in our art study. And then the rest is just a lot of blank pages, but I am sure she will fill this up in no time. We love notebooking in our homeschool. Now, as far as flashcards, we don't use them too often. We do have a few flashcards that we use. For example, our all about reading and all about spelling cards that come with the program. And I store those in a nice little box for each of my girls on our homeschool cart so that they're easy to grab and use for each lesson, but they're not getting messy, out of hand, lost, mixed up. 
If you want to see how I organize our homeschool cart, check out this video that I did with some friends not so long ago. There's one more system that I want to share with you, and that is what I use for daily paper that my girls need to work on that day. So worksheets that we need to do or any loose paper that I am printing for the girls for their schoolwork. We have handwriting practice books or our math workbooks from Singapore Math. I have no problem tearing those books right apart. If they have perforated pages, if they're consumable books, I will just rip out pages as we go. This is how I keep track of that, and that is our clipboard system. I absolutely love these clipboards. I will link them down below. The clipboard itself is clear, and it has a nice plastic sleeve. So you can actually slide papers in that you want to keep and kind of have for reference. So for example, I have my daughter's weekly schedules slid in there, and we also have the ability to check stuff off as we go with a chalk marker or dry erase marker. And because this is acrylic, it will just wipe right off and clean up really easily. In the actual clip part of the clipboard, that is where I will put worksheets or activities each day that we need to accomplish. And sometimes I will compile all of that on a Sunday night, for example, and I'll have kind of a big stack that's going to be for the entire school week, and I'll just put things in order. Other times I am not that organized, and I will just put stuff the night before. It also makes our schoolwork more portable. Our girls can easily take their clipboards to the sofa or even their bedroom and do some independent work anywhere they want with a nice sturdy surface to write on. And then at the end of the day or at the end of the week, we can go through whatever they have finished from the clipboard, take it off and decide where it needs to be plugged in. Does it need to go into their art portfolios? Does it need to be trimmed up and taped into their notebooks? Or can we just toss it? We use a lot of worksheets and printables that we end up not keeping because I understand that we are using them for a purpose. We're using them to teach, practice, or learn something very specific, and once that's accomplished, it's not necessary to keep that. If it's not their very best work, or if it's not sort of a cumulative summary of what we've been learning through an entire unit, then I don't really feel like we need to keep it. And generally, my girls agree, but again, if they do want to keep that paper, we already have the systems in place that set a limit on how much they can keep. And so that's not a problem for me either. All right, y'all, that is literally it. If we have any homeschool paper, it is in one of those places. I'd love to hear how you keep track of paper clutter in your homeschool. Have you tried any of the systems that I showed in this video? Or do you have a different system that works really well for your family? let me know in the comments. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out the playlist. I will see y'all in the next video. Happy homeschooling. <laughs>